Have you heard about the Houston Safari Club Foundation? They're a nonprofit organization that provides annual scholarships to college students, hunting and fishing trips, and outdoor education programs for hundreds of students each year. And they fund conservation projects at home and abroad to protect habitat and wildlife. A community of hunters and people passionate about the outdoors. Monthly events, an annual convention, member benefits, and so much more. Whether you hunt quail in South Texas or big game around the world, this is the place for you. Become a member today. Go to wehuntwegive.org to learn more. Wehuntwegive.org. Tradition. Conservation. Family. The outdoors. It matters to you. It matters to us. This is Hunting Matters. Presented by Houston Safari Club Foundation. Here's Joe Bitar. Good morning. Welcome to Hunting Matters on KPRC 950. I'm your host, Joe Bitar. I am Ramon Robles. And Ramon, you're back safely from the infamous yeah. 2021 first road trip with the kids. <laughs> How did that yeah, turn out? Yeah, did, they did well. My yeah. kid is a daredevil. I didn't know that. They what? did the whole water slide thing. Cool. I thought they would be intimidated. They weren't. Yeah. Uh, my kid yacked in the car between Waco and Fort Worth. That's fine. We yeah. dealt with that. We overcame and adapted. Did you go to Bucky's? Yeah, a few. Yeah, yeah, a few buckies. A few buckies. <laughs> we we mapped every buckies and how long it took to get there. What did yeah. the kids think about that? It, they were in awe. They were they have never seen so many uh, gums and uh, gumballs before in their lives yeah. and can't you know all those treats. Oh, yeah. They were yeah. Cool. Sugar high the whole way. A couple of times we had them just run behind us and push because oh, they car? were so sugared yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> we save money on fuel, which is <laughs> yeah rapidly rising every Bingo. day. Gas prices keep going up. Did you miss me a little bit? I did, just Good. a little bit. I appreciate that. Just yeah. a little bit, you know. Yeah. I uh, I was gonna I was gonna send a search party out for you if you didn't show up today. <laughs> yeah, you know, I figured you know, that first road trip with kids. I remember those days. It's not it's not easy, but it's uh, sounds like you you guys had a great memorable. time. memorable. Yeah, my wife said there's some moments that she'll f- remember the rest of her life. Cool. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you guys did it. I'm glad uh, glad everybody survived. Thanks and, for letting me. I had to practically beg you for the I weekend know. off. I know. I know. Yeah. Appreciate that, uh, You're welcome. Scrooge. You're welcome. Anytime, anytime. How'd your shoot go? You had the thing that the tenth, I believe. Yeah, we had the uh, was it the tenth? Uh, whatever day that was. We had the crawfish track. boil and catfish fry, and we had a fun shoot, and uh, we had an, an unexpected guest show up. Uh, does the name Stephen Williford ring a bell? Should it? Remember the Baptist Church shooting in South Texas a few years oh, ago? Oh my goodness! The, yes, the hero of the day, yes. Stephen Williford, showed up. And uh, was hanging out with us. We didn't know he was coming to like the day before, and uh, said he wanted to drop by. And just a super nice guy. And tell me, he participated in the clay shoot. He did. He didn't actually do any shooting. He just hung out and talked to everybody. And you know, there yeah. were a million questions that people had of him, and he was passing out honor coins. And oh, nice. Just a just a really nice guy. You know, Stephen. If you saw him on the street, and you have to take a second glance to think, hey, is that Santa Claus? Yeah, he looks just like Santa right. Claus. But his his story is pretty unique, and. Uh, you know, uh, right place, right time, wrong place, right time. Uh, he just happened to be there that day and, and put an end to the uh, to the Baptist church shooting down there. And uh, I believe it was Trinity, Texas. So it was. Yeah. Uh, in our mind, in my mind, I always role play out. OK, I'm, I'm carrying, you know, in this situation, what's going to happen? What would I do? And that all goes to crap when yep. it hits the fan. Right. And that dude, it hit the fan and he took care of business. Yep. I mean, just like that. Yeah. And that is admirable. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Pretty cool to meet the guy, and uh, we had uh, we had about 125 people show up. Nice, uh, man, and they stayed till till we told them to leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we had a bunch of shooters, uh, and then of course we did the uh, the big crawfish bowl after that. I had some live music uh, by Ken, Ken and Danielle, and uh, it was great. We had a good time. We How were, much crawfish do you eat? Don't lie. None. Really? I was too busy running around. Oh, that's right. You play hostess. Stuff, yeah, and, yeah, I was yeah, the hostess. That's right. And, no, I didn't, and that, that's a shame. That's uh, it's highly unusual for me, but uh, uh, it was great. I mean, they, they've got the place. We were out there near near an old barn in Hockley, Texas, and mm-hmm. ate under the oaks and watched the sunset. And that's it was Texas. Just, yeah, it was incredible. It was incredible. We had a great time. So, uh, folks, if you want to hear about some upcoming events, go to wehuntwegive.org, dot uh, org, the Houston Safari Club Foundation website. There's something happening just about every month. Uh, coming up, we're having a trophy room reception. We're going to have a Craig Boddington, who is an internationally renowned conservationist and hunter and writer, uh, this guy's written books about guns and hunting and tracking. And I mean, you just can't imagine those things are coming up. So 
Uh, Craig Boddington will be be with us here coming up, and then a later year this year we're going to have Scott Lesath, who is known as the Sporting Chef. He has his own TV show and <laughs> he specializes cool. in wild game recipes. So a lot of cool stuff. Go to wehuntwegive dot org, sign up to become a member. We'd love to have it, have you join our ranks and uh, come on out to the uh, monthly events. So um, anyway, so today we've got uh, Chip Whitrock with us, and Chip is the founder of a a group and a company organization called the Sportsman's Business Alliance. Good morning, Chip. How you doing today? Hey, good morning, Joe. Great, thanks. Where you where where are we talking to you? Where you where are you stationed at right now? I am in uh, Middle Iowa. Mm, on purpose yeah yeah. Okay. that's good i mean i didn't know if work was there or that's where you lived uh, it's family i'm originally from carroll iowa okay and uh yeah we've got some good hunting ground down here so stick my nose around see if we can find some mushrooms and see if there's any turkeys around and do a little camping that's living life right there <laughs> where's the uh best uh nearest fast food restaurant oh well, my town's big enough where they're actually here my brother just okay. suffered through Arby's, and <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> my wife, you know, she does not allow me to go to those places. She just uh, despises them for some reason. She was a track athlete, so yeah, not a fast food fun. I found that if the hungrier you are, the better shooter you are when you're out in the in the field. Well, it keeps you from dozing off anyway. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> so, so you're a mushroom hunter as well. Uh, I really pretty much just plow around the timber i'm not very successful at it um much better turkey hunter than i am a mushroom hunter but um we find our fair share How, how's turkey That's season fair. how's turkey season been for you uh it's been actually a little bit slow been a little bit slow we've had some cold fronts come through and uh I'm, i think i'm coming out too early so you know my tail gets tired before hmm. uh they get out moving yeah, it's it's hard to predict year to year when they're going to hint up, when they're going to get down, get active, and uh, it's always a it's always a challenge. It's always a guessing game for me every year. You know, in Texas especially, you just you just never know. You just never know where they are on the cycle based on where the uh, season starts. Well, I just moved back from Scottsdale, so I haven't hunted here in probably six years. So I feel like it's more mm. territory again, and just not in the rhythm like I was when I was living here full time. Yeah, yeah. Did, so you're you're refamiliarizing yourself with it. Did you did you grow up hunting as a kid? Yeah, I was one of the fortunate ones. Um, my dad didn't hunt, but my brother did, and uh, he started me when I was pretty young. Of course, we had a we had a creek, so we trapped for muskrats and raccoons and mink, and just kind of evolved into you know pheasant hunting. Of course, we're in Iowa, so we had fantastic pheasant hunting, mm. and uh, it was pretty easy to get hooked on that, and. Uh, my brother was in, he was eager to take me. So, you know, it's so unfortunate now we see so many youth and adults for that matter that just don't have that genealogy or that fortune within their family. And, uh, you know, it's tough to go outside of that network and really get comfortable enough to fulfill that delivery and that education and awareness to where they can feel confident to go on their own. So I feel yeah. very fortunate. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I want to come back to that topic here in a little bit. Folks, we're going to take a quick break on Hunting Matters on KPRC 950 AM. We'll be right back on the other side. At least you know what way I feel. It's the Houston Safari Club Foundation Worldwide Hunting Expo and Convention at the George R. Brown Convention Center. February 4th through the 6th, 2022. Hunting and fishing outfitters from around the world. Book the trip of a lifetime. Gear, firearms, optics, taxidermy, artwork, and more. Tickets are only 10 bucks at the door. Children 12 and under and active military with ID get in free. Banquets, live entertainment, raffles, auctions, and proceeds support youth outdoor education, scholarships, conservation, and hunters' rights. Sponsored by Forlo, Capital Farm Credit, and Wildlife Partners. Go to wehuntwegive.org to learn more. I've got a good woman at home who thinks I Want to hear about my brush with greatness and Hank Williams Jr.? Oh, please. <laughs> Hank Williams Jr. used to be married to my cousin's husband's sister. Okay, that's too much. <laughs> that's just stop. I'm not kidding. Say, okay, cousin's, cousin's husband's, husband's sister. Okay. 
Okay. So he's, what, three times removed? I guess so, yeah. <laughs> okay. And I actually remember the stories as a kid about the time he fell off the mountain. And, oh. And, you know, that's why he, he has the beard. nearly died, yeah. The, yeah. yeah. The beard and covers the, the scars and, and the glasses. and Yeah. yeah. And uh, I saw him in concert when I was uh, in college, and he almost fell off the, the oh, he almost fell off the mountain no. on the stage. But Hank Hank straightened up, you know. Yeah. He, he couldn't help it. Oh, of course not. You know where he came from, but he's a he's a great musician. So uh, I thought you were going to tell me you'd try to play that card with him. No. Like, hey, Hank. You know we're nah. practically kin. <laughs> you know. Uh, can I can I have a thousand dollars? Family tree's not that forked. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd probably say, "Yep, you're right." <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. Chip Whitrock, who is the founder of the Sportsman's Business Alliance, is with us today. Good morning, Chip. Hey, good morning, Joe. Ramon? Chip, what is the... You guys. Well, thank you. We. Uh, I'm wondering, what is the nearest weapon that you have nearby? And what is it? Where is the nearest weapon and what uh, is it? Uh, it's right behind my seat. It's a, it's a Glock 10 mil. Okay. And then I, uh, I got a little Ruger... 1022 a little pistol that you like to dink with yeah we uh we ask everybody that question don't think this is an interrogation or anything <laughs> i looked left and looked right <laughs> <laughs> would be really scary is if you looked right and ramon's tapping on your window <laughs> that would be scary <laughs> oh man um yeah ramon likes to he, he kind of gets pumped up and gets excited when he you know typically everybody on the show's got a firearm or a knife somewhere yep. close to them so he's always curious about that Well, the knife's on the side, so. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Chip, you're, I mean, we could have read through your biography here when we got started. Uh, Sportsman's Business Alliance is what you're actively involved in now. And, folks, if you have not heard of them, go check it out at sbadirectory.com. That's Susan Bravo Alpha Directory.com and check out their website. But, Chip, you've, you've been involved in conservation and hunting in the outdoors for quite a while. So can you kind of walk us through a little bit? I know you said you just moved back to uh, to Iowa, but you were very involved in, in various organizations and agencies in uh, Arizona. Yeah, well, I started here in Iowa. just started volunteering with the local quail or Pheasants Forever chapter to do habitat work. So we planted 1,000 miles of buffer strips. And my son, we were just laughing. He planted over 11,000 trees and shrubs before he was hmm. 12 years old. But, um, wow. It just evolved and then became chapter president. So I, I did that for 12 years. And work brought me down to Arizona, and uh, I still really just in, enjoyed it. And so I ended up starting two chapters for Quail Forever down there, which is a sister company to Pheasants Forever. Um, but along that journey, I'd met some people who were more on the legislative front. And coming from Iowa, pretty much it's a right of path. Everybody hunts, everybody fishes. There's really isn't a lot of pushback. So you don't feel it so much. But when I went down to Phoenix, it was it was alarming. The you know the the lack of of support that it really had and the level of pushback. So it really opened my eyes. So there's a organization. It's a collection of 42 of the outdoor groups like. Houston Safari Club and Pheasants Forever, and, and we sit on a board called the Arizona Sportsman for Wildlife Conservation. So it's the the place where the revenue from the license plate sales goes to, and we do habitat work and youth camps and that kind of thing. And I'm the vice president of there, but we have an executive director that follows the legislative things that are happening in Arizona, gives us those things that we should keep an eye on, and then we, as 42 organizations, give insight to legislators on where that should go in favor of the sportsman and it's brought that level of anti-hunting anti you know outdoors anti-gun peace front and center for me and it really woke me up it was it was alarming yeah and people people so it, that, people that are not familiar with arizona i mean you know you and i live eat and breathe it every day through legislative issues and policy issues and that sort of thing but people from outside uh, arizona would would probably just assume hey it's arizona it's part of the old west and yeah. and those guys are all pro guns and pro hunting and that sort of thing and that's not the case no it's not you know mm. we've got you know two sides got the center for biological biological diversity down there which is a huge pushback all the time um you know hsus pretty much walks the streets we have whole foods we have places that they can organize and they are so organized so well funded it was the second piece that really caught my attention and kind of spurred the idea of this business directory. It, it carries about three strong 
you know, leads on why I felt we should put this together. And uh, one was just really to do business with like-minded people. But then two, once you understand how conservation is funded through Life and Sales, Pittman Robertson, Dinkle Johnson, you know, it's really going to behoove me long term if I do business with those that are going to buy those things. They're going to buy hunting license. They're going to buy another weapon. I've got the Glock back here. I get a few extra dollars. I'm getting the new Sig P365 with the anti snag, and I just you know, so I want to keep that money in the funnel that has the best opportunity to get to habitat, get to organizations like yours that you know do fantastic things, get to organizations that do habitat work. You can you know, RMEF, DUPF, you know, they do a tremendous amount of, of habitat work. So if we can find ways to support those organizations and support the businesses that support what it is that we cherish, that's the nucleus of the Sportsman's Business Alliance. Yeah, absolutely. Why would you have a uh, Glock chambered in a 10 millimeter? Well, because my son wanted to hunt bear with a bow and arrow oh and we needed to back and we needed to back up when yeah that that's up. that's a good idea <laughs> which you cannot which you cannot do i learned firsthand uh you cannot do that in canada you can't carry a you know pistol across the border so i was bow hunting with oh, a, really? uh, my sidearm was a knife and Oof. uh had a, had a big sow climb up in the tree with me and I actually had to jab her in the paw to get her away from me with a with the end of an arrow oh. so, would, you, would you have shot if uh, you had a pistol no i uh, you kind of have to gauge your situation yeah but, of course. Uh, yeah i would have been nice just to have it yeah uh but no it wasn't a life-threatening thing but she was she was oh. a, she was paused length away from me <laughs> yeah that's life-threatening enough for me yeah so chip uh you know before we get off that subject can you tell our listeners you've obviously have been and are still involved in a lot of organizations and efforts around the uh, you know the outdoors and hunting i'd like for you as a as a uh, person that's been involved in a lot of these efforts to express how important it is for people to get involved in outdoor hunting, conservation, fishing organizations to weigh in, volunteer, be part of those things. Well, I mean, I'm I'm an addict probably since I was a chapter president for 18 years, a volunteer for five years, and that's just one organization. Right. Most of them, you know, I I just spend more time advocating for them and being aware. And when you get engaged, just like Honestly, when I started listening to you guys in your show and being more involved with the Houston Spartan, I wasn't that well versed on everything that you guys do and all the ways that you touch this community. And and when you get involved as a volunteer or you become part of an organization, you get the opportunity to learn and you get the opportunity to experience and be there. You know, when you are actually out in the field and that that person harvests their first animal or they break their first clay or they shoot that first firearm it's it's an experience that you can't replace unless you just get out there and actually do it and we need a lot of help out there Uh, whether it's you know gun safety whether it's uh you know animal identification whether it's processing whether it's you know just getting kids in the right direction or youth in the right direction or adults in the right direction so i couldn't i couldn't imagine my life being nearly as fulfilled by not having all the opportunities that I've had to be part of youth camps, to be planting all these trees. We drive around here and I can point at all the windbreaks and all the groves and all the trees that I planted that are now 25 feet tall that we put in as little twigs. And it's, yeah. it's extremely, extremely rewarding. That's, that's very cool. And, and you're absolutely right, folks. These organizations need you as much or more than you need them. It's a great place to join together, talk about hunting, talk about the outdoors, do good works, uh, have your fellowship, and it's just it's so important to be part of those organizations in your area. All right, folks, we'll be right back on the other side with Chip Ridgerock, Whitrock. He is the founder of the Sportsman's Business Alliance of Hunting Matters on KPRC 950.
Man, they just don't make them like that anymore, do they? No. no that's, that's good. Love that song. Mm-hmm. Love that artist. I'll tell you what, they just, like I said, they don't make them like that anymore. All right, folks, welcome back to Honey Matters on KPRC 950. I'm your host, Joe Bitar. Hi, I'm Ramon Robles. And we are honored to be joined today with Mr. Uh, uh, I call him Mr. Sportsman's Business Alliance. That's mm-hmm. uh, Chip Whitrock. He's the founder of the Sportsman's B- Business Alliance. Chip, thanks so much again for being with us today. Absolutely, my pleasure. Let's talk about it. SBA, the Sportsman's Business Alliance. That's a mouthful. Let's mm-hmm. let's do a deep dive on this. What is it? How did it start? And what's going on with you guys right now? Well, it started out really as a as a passion project for me, just to really do business with like-minded people. Um, I found out that my barber that I've been using for years ended up seeing me, my dog kennels. He, he's an anti-hunter. I went home and talked to my bug guy. He would never even consider it. And I had this revelation, like, wait a minute, I do all these youth camps, all these meetings, spend all this money, and here I'm supporting businesses that mm. are probably writing a check to the enemy. It's like, this this can't happen. It was it was an alarming thing to me. And then I went through my third open heart surgery, and I'm a financial planner. And uh, I was like, you know what? I really only want to do business with like minded people. My filter is not as good as it used to be. Right. My you know I want to have some commonalities. I want to I want to start out with having a lot of common interests and attitudes and similarities. And so I just started calling my book and got it down to where you got to hunt, fish, or shoot, or better find yourself a different financial planner, nice. which, you know, when you start out, you take anybody, right? You, I, I need the business. And, man, it's been so refreshing. And now when I identify a product or service that I need, it's the first question. Do you hunt, fish, shoot, support an outdoor organization that, that does? And if it's no, it's like, thanks, have a nice day. I'm really not going to, you know, create that boycott piece, which I was tempted to, but I have – tennis shoes that I will not buy. I have sporting goods stores that I will not go to, but that's only half of it. This was, how can I just support those? How can I do something positive and just hire those that support what it is that I'm passionate about and and want to hang on to our heritage of hunting, fishing, and shooting? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I did a deep dive. There just is no way to find out. You can't find a directory out there that says my CPA hunts, fishes, or shoot, or my electrician, my plumber, Whoever it is that I that I need in my life for a product or service, I should be able to identify somebody that shares my same passion and interest. That was really how it started, and uh, we didn't find anything. So it was going to be this meetup group. <laughs> you know, it's like I'm just going to do it locally, and then one thing led to another. And as a chapter president, like you guys, when you do fundraisers, you really want to support. If we don't support those businesses that are sponsors or that buy tables, they bring eight, ten people to a banquet, write big checks and buy big things, you know, other than just that business card size ad on that night or an occasional flash, how can I really help people identify those businesses to help support them so they come back next year? And uh, that was where the the idea was, well, let's build a directory so Mm -hmm. we can promote it to our membership. The membership will know where they can go to to identify the businesses that they remember seeing sitting at that table. They just don't really remember what they did. So, you know, created basically a discriminatory search into Google. You do not show up when you search through the directory unless you're a business on the directory. When you search on Google, God knows what you're getting. Mm-hmm. Right. So whatever whatever they want you to get, that. that's what you're getting. Yeah. And uh, so it was just really from a – fundamental standpoint on being able to support the businesses that were business owners that hunted fish and shoot and as a consumer you know my air conditioning guy literally bends over backwards to make me happy because he knows i'm one of them he's one of us I'm, I'm one of him and we he comes in the house he sees my taxidermy we start talking 45 minutes later he finally gets to work <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's it's you know tells me straight up what I should do rather than me having concerns about what kind of advice I'm getting. Cause I know it's one of the straight shooters. It's one of, it's one of my people. It's, it's in the, it's in the same vein. Right. And it's, it happens. Yeah. It happens every time. It's almost it's like, amazing. you know, the old adage, um, you get to know somebody on a hunting trip, you get to really know somebody around a campfire. I mean, this is kind of like a business campfire. You're spending time and, and, uh, uh, in conversations and in fellowship with somebody who's got similar likes and, 
similar viewpoints and that sort of thing. And you really start to forge friendships and business relationships, which, which can only benefit the business owner. And I'm curious to find out how has it been received by business owners? Well, it's, I mean, business owners and and consumers think it's a great idea. I mean, they absolutely love the idea. It's how do we best disseminate the idea? You know, so because we wanted to help support the organizations throughout the country that do good work like Houston Safari Club, we wanted to let them and help them participate. We wanted to, you know, allow them to be able to be on the receiving end of some of the, you know, the, the financial side of being in the directory. So it's taken us quite a while to put together. And, uh, you know, the thing I dislike about technology is, is about the time you get it where you think you want it, something needs to be changed and trying to make it as simple as possible because I don't like complicated IT stuff. I want to make it simple. I want to go to my phone. I want to go to my computer. I want to type in a product service or a zip code that I want, and I want those to show up for me. Um, so we're in the uh, we're in the uh, beginning phases of that, but um, it's it's been fantastic. And Chip, is this a family business? Uh, it is. Okay. It is. It Ooh. was it was a passion project and. Uh, um, it's very clear that, you know, we're going to need manpower. We're going to need broader reach if we really want this to have the kind of impact that we would like it to have. You know, we're going to have to expand the board. We're going to have to expand resources. There's That's, that's becoming very apparent. Um, but it was one of those pieces where originally I just was selfishly going to do it for me in my little area. And as I started thinking about it and having a better understanding of really just kind of the flow of money as a financial planner, I need to keep this money in the funnel that keeps circulating in the wildlife, outdoor organization, habitat space. And money that gets outside is gone forever. It's going to go in a negative direction. I mean, you're seeing that now. I mean, it's very unusual that we're having such – significant dynamics politically out there and you're seeing you know these organizations that are really showing their true colors that makes it very easy to maybe know who we don't want to do business with but i want to make it easy to find out who i can confidently do business with and and just know that my dollars are staying within the hunting fishing shooting community right and as a consumer let's say i'm out there i'm looking for a product or service can i go to your website at sbadirectory.com and 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 find you know, business providers or service providers? What does that look like? Well, you know, again, we're fairly new, so it's going to be not as, you know, it's not going to be as heavily loaded as we'd like it to be. But, yeah, it depends where you're at. You know, coming from Arizona, um, we're going to have a decent concentration there, and we're actually kicking off in May. Um, We're going to do a campaign with, the Arizona Sportsman for Wildlife Conservation. So that represents 16,000 hunters and fishermen. So we really feel like that'll be our first opportunity to really get the piece pushed out there. I was doing um, basically trial and error, you know, clients and friends and just asking originally people to go through the exercise to see how easy it was to get their ad up. And uh, that's a lot of what you'll see see on there now. So right. we're definitely in the growth space. If you go to the site and uh, you're looking for a product or service in an area that you don't, we don't have somebody, let us know. We'll go to work okay. and find it there. And, and so if somebody's listening and they're a business owner or a service provider and they are pro-hunting, pro-conservation, can they go to the website uh, and contact you about getting listed? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. There's all the information's right there. Um you know, and uh, you know, we'd love to we'd love to have have us be aware that that that, that came through. You know, this conversation through Houston Safari Club. So there's actually hscf.sbadirectory.com. Right. So there's, a, there's a landing there's a landing page for the Houston Safari Club Foundation. Um, but yeah, and uh, there's a contact information. If for some reason they don't find the experience extremely simple, or they want to talk to somebody. 
pick up the phone and call me or send me an email, and we will make sure that that process is as easy as possible. That's good. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you mentioning that, uh, folks. That URL is uh, HSCF, like Houston Safari Club Foundation, dot SBA directory dot com. You can go there and sign up. And uh, SBA directory, the Sportsman's Business Alliance directory, uh, and their efforts will help to support Houston Safari Club Foundation as well. We're going to take a quick break here. Honey Matters on KPRC 950. We'll see you on the other side. Sits around in his underwear Biting on a bullet Pulling out all of his hair A shotgun will has got all of his family there Good morning. Welcome back to Hunting Matters on KPRC 950. I'm your host, Joe Vitor. I am Ramon Robles. I know you hate him, but I'm grateful that we still live in a world with Willie Nelson. I don't hate Willie Nelson. Well, that's not what you told that's me during just, the break. That's an American, and that's a flat out lie. I said, lie. I'm going to play Willie coming back. You're that's like, a you flat play out it, lie. you can walk out the studio. That's a flat out lie. What I said I hated was when you sat down in your underwear <laughs> around the studio with a shotgun. <laughs> oh, okay. I, was I misunderstood. Appalled, man. frightened, <laughs> and perplexed. <laughs> Threatened? <laughs> Threatened <laughs> by your shotgun. <laughs> All right. And misunderstanding. I apologize. Yeah, man. I love Willie Nelson. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, you can go ahead and string me up if I say I don't like Willie Nelson. All right. Good morning, Chip Whitrock. Chip is with us today. He's the founder of the Sportsman's Business Line Alliance. Chip, I, he's got me all tongue-tied talking all this nonsense about not liking Willie Nelson. <laughs> Sorry, Chip. You're having regrets coming on this morning. I apologize. I, I think Ramon ate paint <laughs> chips as a kid. <laughs> Why? I think that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Chip, if you were going to make a meal for uh, an ambassador or somebody very important coming to your house and you had to cook it, what would be that meal? And Yeah, what would be that meal? Well, I live in the Great Lakes, and uh, so we just smashed the perch this year. Okay. So uh, I like fish tacos. I'm just kind of a mm. fish taco. Corn tortilla being lager. in Iowa too, right? <laughs> lager beer, yeah. That's okay. right. Yeah, of course. That's right. The lager beer? Also, yep. Okay. Yeah, we'd come over. Yeah, Joe and I will be there. That's fine. <laughs> do you, do you guys ever do well, sh- you guys ever do shore fries? Oh yeah, yeah. That was one of my favorite things. I was introduced to that in, Can- in Canada. What is it? Tell tell Ramon what a shore fry is. Well, I mean, to me, when we were floating the river, it would it would we literally pull over on the shore we'd keep a handful of them we'd pull over on the shore we'd clean them and uh we'd make them right there and then oh. clean up and continue on fishing oh shore fries it's as fresh as you can get oh i, I was thinking french fries because because no. i'm fat okay no. <laughs> all right got it got it no fish fry well, on the shore yeah shore fries okay cool man and you have like the propane or i guess you just use kindle or i mean tinder open whatever. fire whatever no. you need Whatever you need. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a fairly big project, but if it's part of your deal and part of your 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 plans, then you just prepare for it. We had lawn chairs, pop up tent, we had the the whole nine yards. We'd always have lunch meat and everything, yeah. just in case the fish wasn't. <laughs> yeah, <there>. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Then then it just turns into a picnic. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no fish, no fish fry. It's just, <laughs> it's just uh, a picnic. Yeah, past- hey, but if that's the worst case scenario, yeah. you know, we're having a picnic. Exactly. Well, there's, yeah, there could be worse things. Worse All right, things we'll come be. to a shore fry with uh, Chip. Yeah, they're pretty fun. There's always, there's always cold beer and cigars, so. My Ooh. man. We're about to skip the fish course yep. right there. Yep. <laughs> So Chip, we mentioned earlier uh, we've got a we've got a website set up a website URL. It's uh, HSCF. That's like Houston Safari Club Foundation. HSCF dot SBA Directory dot com. Talk a little bit about that. What what we're doing with uh, with you guys and what you guys are doing to help benefit Houston Safari Club Foundation. Well, the directory is pretty simple. There's there's three different membership levels, and it's fifty bucks a year, two hundred and fifty dollars a year, or five hundred dollars a year. So we didn't want it to be financially prohibitive from anybody out there in business to be able to get their business on the directory. Um, but with having the technology now, this link through Houston Safari Club Foundation allows us to be able to identify where that business found out about us. And for me it was a way to be able to reward the outdoor organizations that do great work like Houston Fire Club Foundation um, does 
and be able to support the businesses. So if somebody comes in through your link, then we're going to send 35% of the gross revenue back to the Houston Spark Club Foundation to help continue their work. So as a financial planner insurance guy, there's you know somebody out there who gets a nibble off of the business I write. So I just took that concept and put it into this so you know we could uh, you know, reward the business owners that are part of the Houston Spark Club Foundation and in turn we could reward the Houston Spark Club Foundation. And then we allocate 10% of the gross to advertising for the businesses and for the Houston Spark Club Foundation to be able to help promote your link. Yeah, and it's a, so, we really appreciate that. Yeah, it was just a way, you know, because there's pockets. You know, I don't care. I'm, I'm Pheasants Forever. They got 160,000 members. You got, you know, the whole gamut of organizations that are looking for ways to support what it is their mission is and – I just felt in turn we could find a way to be able to promote the businesses, support the organization, and keep the money in the funnel that's going to do good work. So it just seemed natural to us. Right. Um, you know, I was looking a little bit over your, your past bio and your history. Now, you, you've done some work with one of the fastest growing segments in the outdoors, and that's the women getting in the outdoors. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think it was from all my years of doing youth camps. <laughs> um, I love youth camps. Um, we do 55 or 56 of them down in Arizona. Um, they're all catered. They're all guided. They're all, you know, the best locations. And our youth numbers are still declining. It's it's terrible. So we're introducing honey to a demographic that, you know, can't afford a gun, can't really have the ability to be able to get there. And now we see women. And being in the pheasants quail world, um, they're easy entry. So they love dogs, and you can start them out on sporting clays. And there's just this growing desire of the of the female population to want to see what it's like. And when you can start by, you know, a clay pigeon or a target, and then see if they want to evolve from there, and then they get to see dog work. We just thought, well, let's let's have a women's event. So we had the national outdoor women's weekend in Arizona, um, in February of 2020. And, uh, we got some fantastic support. So Tina Dockin from, from Dockin dead file, Tom Dockin's wife, Tina said, I would love to hum, come and help coach. And Tiffany Lakoski, she's like, I would love to come and help. And so we just like had these people come out of the woodwork that, are fantastic people at what they do, but they just wanted to help support. And so we had, I think, 46 women, and we shot almost 5,000 rounds. Mm. Wow. <laughs> it was just, it was, it was amazing. And we still have groups that get together, scattered all over the country. Um, oh, what is her name? I just saw her. She shot at one of your events. Um, Texas women. She makes. I should think of her name, and I can't believe yeah, I'm drawing a blank too. Yeah, well, she, I can't get over five thousand rounds. That's like two million dollars in ammo right now. <laughs> Fortunately, it was in February. Oh, that's before true. It really hit. It, yeah. really, it really hit the fan. Although we were a little nervous after that, we had forty women from all over the country come together, and you know, you're teaching them how to shoot mm. shotguns and. It was pretty close interaction. Yep. We didn't hear yep. any any negative effects, but it still kind of made us nervous. And yeah, well, anytime so you get just, anytime you get any group that that large that that are kind of at the novice level. But I got to tell you, from what I've seen and observed, talking to instructors and that sort of thing, is that women typically uh, they listen more, they pay more attention, they're more specific to detail, and they're quicker learners than men. Sorry, guys, but that's just mm -hmm. what I'm hearing. No. It's very true, and they also, you know, to all the women out there who might be listening, you know, we would love to have your help. Um, women like to learn from other women, and uh, I think there, every woman out there knows that men aren't the best communicators. <laughs> so as the as the weekend wore on, I pretty much found myself carrying shotgun shells and holding doors more so than, you know, instructing then maybe i thought just because we had good women coaches and they were very receptive and and there was a bunch that left there i think that could have very easily shot 
my doors off. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you guys yeah, did. You yeah. guys did a good thing there. Absolutely, Chip. All right, folks. We've been uh, joined today by Chip Whitrock. Chip is the founder of the Sportsman's Business Alliance. Chip, thank you so much. Folks, go to hscf.sbadirectory.com. We will see you next week on Honey Matters on KPRC 950. A woman and the kids and the dogs and me.